Okay, let's continue our meeting. And uh, first, we need to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I reviewed them. I'll second approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 In the clerk's report. Uh, okay, so the election recap, we had some hiccups at the beginning of the day, but um, they were addressed, and the rest of the day went um, pretty smooth. Uh, from the feedback that I've received, the voters enjoyed the new equipment, but made the process um, very efficient, and it was easy once they overcame their apprehension to be able to cast their ballot. We did go ahead and send surveys out to everyone that worked the polls, and we've had about 120 of them returned. We have a third party compiling the results, and then as soon as we got them, I'll make sure I forward them on to everyone else. Um, but so 120 is out of how many? 120 out of 306. So we just got over a third. Then. And they just went out yesterday morning about 10 a.m. Huh? You already got that many back already? Okay. Yep, and they're submitting them electronically. So we get the feedback immediately, and then it downloads into a spreadsheet. Um, and that's being compiled for us. Um, we also, the biggest question we've had is how does it compare to the 2015 election and we had, um, in the 2015 election there were 10,562 voters and in the 2019 there was 12,120 voters. So um, both elections had a referendum, um, but all the rest of that data will be uploaded um, to the site so you can see specifics now that we've certified the election. Uh, and then the other thing that we've been working on is preparing for some of the changes that will take effect on July 1st with um, with the new law that will take effect, but that's later on in the <coughs> agenda. My comment on that. That's pretty much all I had on my report. Much shorter this time. Thanks. <laughs> Campaign finance reports. Unfinished business. Okay. Up. I get at everybody's place there's an updated list. Quite a few have come in. Um, Lynn Ross did submit some um, campaign finance reports. She's just finalized the rest of them. I wanted to make sure that I made that comment on the record because um, she thought she submitted everything and she didn't. So she was just notified yesterday that of the rest of the outstanding ones. Um, and then we went and went ahead and added the individuals that are now outstanding after the last deadline has passed. So that's why there's a couple new names added. Okay, so what we have here, this document is is new, updated. Mm -hmm. Okay. As of this morning. Okay. So for, for Jean Ullman, I thought they were going to go ahead and dissolve hers. I know they're working towards it. We haven't hit the date that we can administratively dissolve it, but I know they were working to get in touch with her children or whoever's her power of attorney. Um, I mean, there's really nothing that anyone can do until either it reaches a date or um, her power of attorney signs off on that. Are any of these, if they qualify, that we can administratively dissolve them ourselves? I don't think so. Because most of them are recent. Mm -hmm. So on the the new list, the last three were sent notices because they hadn't because of the they were sent letters. Mm -hmm. So did they did they respond in any way at all at the last? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I have not heard from Jeff Trout. I don't believe, and he has not contacted the office at all. No but, response. Mm -mm. Okay. But I have had contact with Lynn Ross, and she's thought that she submitted everything when she submitted the, the last round of reports to us, so she is working on it. She did submit something within the week, it just wasn't everything that she needed. And then Jean Olin, that's the one we were just discussing, she um, is incapacitated. So we're waiting to see if her family can um, fulfill the last one or the date that it administratively dissolves. So the, the, the procedure that th this board had adopted um, some time ago um, was, and I think I had provided that to uh, folks earlier, um, but we are, one of the things that you had outlined is, is that the election board um, is to meet within 10 days of receiving the list 
to discuss. The election board passes a motion in public meeting authorizing the attorney to send a notice to each delinquent committee demanding that they file a report by a specific date. So that's what we just did with the May 2nd letters. Okay. Um, step four, the election board convenes another meeting to confirm compliance after the specific due date. So in my letter, uh, um, what we had done is to um, ask that they provide a report by May 16th, which was yesterday. So um, what you have is a list of folks who were given notice. I sent that out, certified mail and regular mail, asking that they um, submit something to the clerk's office no later than May 16th. So at this point, you've got um, no compliance from I guess I'm not clear on where you have no compliance or where you've got partial compliance or where you have full compliance from that list. Um, I've had no compliance from Jeff Trout, partial from Lynn Ross. I don't know what you want to say about Gene Ullman. I don't know that she's in a position to respond right. herself, so I don't know who would be at fault for that. Okay, then you have um, Ed Morales. Yeah. He's not on the list. Okay, so he, you he's, got... He's already taken care of you got You got something from him then? I'm assuming he's not on the list. Okay. And then Rodney King. Um, right. Stephen... Okay, Stephanie Matthews and William Lopez and Lisa Kedrick. So they've all completed then. You've got something since May 2nd. I am assuming they're not on the current outstanding list. Okay. So then what you've got is, um, you know, what you've got to determine here then is if the committee still, um, still, if any committee refuses to voluntarily comply and file a report, the election board can pass a motion in public meeting to begin the process to set forth the Administrative Procedures Act, which requires notice, subpoenas, hearing, and adoption of findings of fact. So that's the step that you're at. Now these new ones, are, I think these are new notes at the top. Yes. Um, Tony Biancardi, Jerry Butler, Robert Holman, Alan Kirkpatrick, and Nicholas Loving were all this most recent yes. reports that are due prior to the primary. So have they even received notice that they need to get their campaign reports submitted or? No. Because they, we haven't even done the letter for them yet. Yeah, we can, you guys can, we can back, on those we can back up. You can set a date um, by which you want um, those to be submitted. Um, before the next just meeting. like we did this time that they have to submit before this meeting. And then you guys can review if we got no response. So I would think they would need they need to get their notice as well mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to go ahead and correct the error before right. we take any action on them. I would mm -hmm. think on the first five. Um, you know, Gene Allman, like I said, I think due to the condition of the of, of the candidate, and you and you said you've already had conversation with um, anchor children, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying to get them to and how much more time do we have to eat? You think we have to go until we can just administratively dissolve it, which I think would be really restricting <coughs> them. I can look up the date. I think that one, that's probably where we're headed, is just to dissolve it, just to assist the family. Right. Well, if we can, um, just so that I have some clarity, can we, can we just take these in batches? Uh, sure. Kind of just go with the... Um, so the first five. The first five, if you can give me uh, what you want to do with the first five and deal with those. Start to know this process. Mm -hmm. that, you know, the letter sent, get the okay. letter sent out to them so they can get it corrected. And what do you want uh, a date by which the response comes That's back to you? Uh, On June 20th, I think. I'm going to ask to move that meeting. What's that? Can I do? I'm going to ask to move that meeting. Okay. So, I don't know if you want to talk about that now. If you want to talk what, about yeah, that. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and... Because <coughs> I'm assuming when I put the notice that they, they comply with correcting the finance report error prior to the next meeting. Okay. So whatever date, you know, we choose. All right. So there will be one day in advance of whatever date we choose for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what day, Jessica, are you looking for? Uh, well, it's scheduled for June 30th, but I have um, uh, 4D claims training all day and uh, domestic violence summit after that. 
So any other day in the week or whenever you guys want. You're saying well, I'm going to be gone that entire week. I was going to have to send well, a proxy. <laughs> yeah. On the June 20th? Yeah. Okay. So let's, go one week. Week. Go, let's go one week later then? This is a proxy. Because that's the last meeting before the new right. election board. That's the other so concern. it's going to be a long meeting, I would anticipate. Okay. So you want to push it to July? Well, July 1st is when the new board takes up. Right. Right. So our July meeting. I'm assuming we'll stay on our same schedule. I have the room booked through the end of the year, but again, we have to see if that's going to accommodate the new members of the board. So I don't. I don't know how to answer that. Hmm. All right. Let's. Um, so we're looking at possibly the June the 27th, correct? But Dave said he's going to be gone anyway. Mm -hmm. So about the week before. Or about a week before. Or he sends a proxy. Well, the 13th of June, I would be available. Does that give him enough time? For what it's worth, I won't be. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the 14th? 13th. 13th? Okay. It would be the moving the Thursday back one. Can we move it up because the grand opening of the Expo Center is at 4:30? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going uh, the 20th and the 27th. Both those weeks, I'll be gone. Can we move it to earlier in the day, though, on the 13th, and I'll check for a room that's available. If you wouldn't like my attendance, I won't be able to be the 13th. That, Not that the 13th? yeah. What about day before, day after? Um, the 12th. Good for me. If 12, I'm in uh, Andy for a clerk's conference. Then 14th is fine. 14th, okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm gone 14th. Sorry. <laughs> so 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm in Andy the 10th, the 12th. It's a The eleventh is fine. Eleventh four. She's, she's oh. gone. Now. Oh, that whole, I'm sorry. I missed that. Um, yeah, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Are you here at all during the seventeenth through the twenty-first? I'm gone from the fourteenth all the way to July first. Oh, okay. So we need something before. He may he may just need to get a proxy. Yeah. I was going to. Mm -hmm. Well, let's do the 14th. No, it doesn't help you. <laughs> but you said you were back, right? Mm -hmm. And you're here for the 14th, correct? Mm -hmm. I can do the 14th as well. And then I'll send a proxy. Okay. Yeah, and if it ever gets resolved before then, you may we can always cancel the meeting. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so then you don't have to worry about the proxy either. Okay. And what time on the 14th are we looking at? So I can tell the person to get it. I'm open all day. I'm not picky either on that day, so. I'm fine, too. Mm hmm Want to do like a 1 o'clock? Yep. 1 p.m.? So then they have to have their finance reports corrected by June 13th? That's correct. Mm hmm Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first five. We, I will get letters out to them. Ask that they um, submit their reports by June thirteenth. We'll set a meeting for June fourteenth and review what the status is on those. 
Okay, then I, I would suggest that you look at each one of these in, these latter three individually, with what action you want to take on each one of them separately. So the first one, as we discussed on Gene Ullman, I mean, due to the family issues there, I would say we kind of delay and see, allow the family to make the correction themselves, or we get to the point where we can just administrate dissolve it for them. You might um, be able to allow someone else to Right, they may be able to get family understands. Right, I mean, because they just need to wrap it up is really what it sounds like. Okay, so I'll look up the date to administratively dissolve it, and then if that's not in the <coughs> current case early, then, sure. then we'll see what other steps can be taken. Okay. And then you said Lynn Ross, you, had you already have been contacted by Yeah, her. I've already been contacted. Yeah, she's trying to comply, correct? She is. So I think that's another one. I think we should give them some additional time and just do an update on their next meeting. Yeah. Just I to agree. kind of figure out what's happening. Yeah, so I can email her too and tell her that it needs to be completed by June 13th. I can add her to the list if okay. you'd like me to. Um, and. Do it and remind, can I send, send her, I can move her up to the other list of sending another letter out. Send her another letter because she's close mm -hmm. to completing it. Mm -hmm. so okay. For then. Okay. Um, and you said on Jeff Trout. I haven't received any information from him. I did a, um, I, I do have a confirmation that they received the letter on May the 6th. So they did sign the letter. And that would be the next step would be for there to be a um, notice um, for us to send out notice subpoenas and um, and to set that up for hearing. And we'll set that again for that June June fourteenth. Yes. And again, if he resolves it prior to then. Yeah, as soon as if I receive notice, I'll email it out to everyone. Like that. Okay. okay. Mhm. Mm I think that takes care of, that takes takes care of those. Mhm. Mm time we're going to <coughs> review the complaint of Rebus versus Modesto. Are the parties present? In, in Hi. Hi. Okay. You can come up front. Have you had a chance to review the complaint? Yes. And then she just gives her response. Dave, Dave would you like to uh, go ahead and swear them in? Do we swear them in? Mm -hmm. 
Are you both going to testify? Yes. Okay, would you raise your right hands, please? Do you swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Is the complainant here, too? Do you know? No. Is Ms. Rivas here? Okay. I got a question. Instead of going through a bunch of testimonies, can I just um, turn in an updated um, campaign finance report? Yeah. Hey, can I have a question? Sure. I'd still like to appeal it. No. I just, I just want to get this over with and turn in an uh, update. I'm the candidate. My husband's mm -hmm. the treasurer. And he did all the paperwork. And I, once the complaint was filed, I went through, double-checked everything, and here's an updated com um, campaign finance report. I'd just like to submit it. Okay. But, but I'd like to explain why I turned in the report the way I turned it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's appropriate. Well, she's a party, but yeah. can you address? Yeah, sure. yeah, absolutely. Sure. Can I so have my say? Yes. You can. Prior to turning in the uh, election report, number one, I've been Liz's treasurer for probably, uh, or she's been on the city council 24 years. So I've been on her campaign, as her campaign treasurer for the last five years. I've also done Maureen Wendricks's uh, campaign treasury report, and I was her treasurer. And I had a question um, prior to me turning in the last report for Liz. And the question was, a majority of the spaghetti dinner fundraising tickets that uh, people wrote out checks for were for the tickets. So I called voter registration and I asked them, I said, do I have to list each ticket, even if it's over $100, if they bought, let's say, five tickets or ten tickets at ten dollars a ticket, do I have to list them as buying tickets for over a hundred dollars? And the question I received was, or the answer I received was, well, over here at uh, voter registration, we do not handle that anymore. You have to call the clerk's office. So I called the clerk's office. I talked to Victoria Gresham, and I said, Victoria, here's my question. When they're buying tickets for the spaghetti dinner, do I have to list anybody that spends over $100 on tickets? And she told me, well, we've never had a question when people buy tickets, do they have to list the amount of tickets? So, no. What you have to list is what goes in and what goes out. That's exactly what I did. What went in, what went out. I know there were further complaints on I used the wrong form for this and the wrong form for that. And yes, my wife's reviewed it, corrected it. Yes, I did use wrong forms for different items. But my question here is when a candidate does have a question, and let's say they call the clerk's office and they get the wrong information back, and to me, it was just a dirty, cheap shot to put it in the paper that one candidate files another candidate, a complaint against another candidate saying she doesn't know what she's doing. And it wasn't my wife's doing, it was my doing. And when I get a reporter calling me up in the blind because I had no idea of the complaint, I think that if I'm going to receive a complaint, I shouldn't first get the information from a reporter. I should get it from your office. Mm -hmm. So that I, if I have a rebuttal, it's not first thing that comes out of my mouth. It's some, it, evidently my, my wife's candidate had a chance to file a letter with the press. And I get off work. I get a phone call. Hey, what's your response to this? But, uh, your candidate, your wife's candidate, more or less is filing a complaint against her that she doesn't know what she's doing. And I'm thinking, what is this about? So prior to me not even knowing what's going on, I said, I don't even know what you're talking about. 
Makes me even sound dumber. Um, that's why I wanted to say, hey, I even told Victoria Gresham, put this in your memory bank because I know it's going to come up later and I'm prepared. I got every I've got a copy of everybody's check that wrote out a check for tickets. I've got a form that says that if they're applying it for tickets and the question was, well, do I have to go ahead and claim each ticket as it, uh, anything over $100? And the answer was no. The answer was more or less you just have to go and file what came in, what went out. And that's all I did. So, I mean, and then uh, our, my chairman is uh, uh, Julia Jan, Judge. <coughs> And I said, Julia, what's the best way to handle this? And she said, Tom, just correct it. Mm -hmm. Make the amendment and correct it. My wife corrected everything, took everything out of my hands, and she corrected everything. Is it 100%? I don't know. We've gone through a couple of the other candidates' uh, records, and I guarantee I could tear two inches apart. I think I could tear Nina Reeves' apart. And I could say, is this right or is that right? And I can file a complaint with your committee and say, I don't think they did theirs right. And is it fair? I think what, when, you, when I call the office for advice, and I'm still going to call the office for advice, because when we close it, there's two forms. I don't even know which one to use. Is it E or D when you close an account on what you loan to the committee? It's so confusing, it's unreal. And, and I just wanted to make sure that uh, I clarified it. I told my wife I really wanted to fight it <clears throat> because I'd like to get your opinion if I were to ask each member on the board, hey, when somebody files, let's say you have a $100 ticket fundraiser and they buy a ticket, do you have to file $100 that they bought each ticket? You would? Yes, $100. Okay, now if I bought one at $10, if I bought one at $10, but you bought 10 tickets, do you have to file? Is one person spending $100? You have to make If one person is spending $100 and putting that in the contribution, it must be listed. Okay, yeah. here, here, here would be my next question. Let's say I gave you, Jessica, 10 tickets to sell. You sold your 10 tickets and you gave me a check for $100, do I have to say that you gave me $100? That person's giving you the money. And 10 different people are coming. Whoever the tickets go to, they go to. But the person giving you the money is the person that you write down. Okay, but the answer I got from Victoria Gresham had was not... I with Victoria, and the only conversation she stated that she had with you was over a large contribution form. Was about what? A large what? contribution what form to use for a large contribution. That's not true. So um, that's the only information that I have regarding you contacting the office. But when a candidate files, they're given this entire packet. And in this packet, it has state resources as to where to go if you have questions. The clerk's office, voter registration, none of them can give you legal advice, and this is a legal form. So I, I read that yellow pamphlet, and I, I understand that part. So. That lists all the resources for the state. All of the resources are found on the state website. And you are correct. There are other campaign finance reports that are incorrect, that have been submitted incorrectly. Mm -hmm. I said in January at my first meeting that I want candidates to have training. When the new elections office takes effect in July, one of their duties will be to give candidate training. You can only do so much in four and a half months. So, right, but so I mean, in, in the future, if you, like, if you would like to file a complaint against somebody else's campaign finance report, you absolutely can. No, we don't. I mean, any no, candidate can file a complaint yeah, against no, any no, other no, candidate no, if they're doing something no, incorrectly. No, we just hear the complaint. Right. Okay. It's up to the people mm -hmm. who are the candidates or a member of their committee to realize that somebody else is doing something wrong and make them correct it. And I understand. I've been where you are. I filed a complaint before. Well, the other complaint, I, the other complaint I've got is the way to hear about it shouldn't be from the press. As soon as we receive the complaint, we refer it to our attorney. If the press works faster than the attorney can click through and do the research and get through, press is pretty quick. 
So, Bus was real quick. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I had two reporters <laughs> call me. Doing job I had two reporters call me right away, and it's like, what are you okay. talking about? But, I mean, the press, they work quickly. That's Their job is to work quickly. Ours is to make sure that every I is dotted and T is crossed. So our attorney did the research behind it to find out what was going on, and that took a couple <coughs> extra emails. Then the press being able to say, hey, this person filed a complaint. Mm -hmm. Their facts are correct. Someone did file a complaint. We have to come up with, is it incorrect? Is it not incorrect? They just have to announce that something was filed. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that uh, my wife, my wife uh, revised the report, who goes over and says it's 100% correct? Currently, the board no one. The board, the board yep. will eventually. But different counties have a different way of doing things, and I completely understand what has been the practice. Mr. Board. Any time in the near future, if someone turns in a report, we file stamp it, upload it, and that's been going on for years. Nobody looks at it, and except for possibly the other candidates who are like, oh, okay, let's see who's funding, let's see where all of this came from, and then they're like, oh, well, they didn't do this right, and they didn't do this right, and then some people choose to make a complaint on that. Other people are like, hmm. Well, my last, my last complaint is, as a candidate, let's say I can file a complaint against anybody, mm -hmm. Whether their, their form is 100% correct or not correct, and right away the paper will come out and say, okay, one, mm -hmm. one candidate filed a complaint against another candidate, mm -hmm. and to me that's a cheap shot. That's, but that's exactly how it works. Is anyone can file a complaint on anyone, and then when it gets to the time that the three of us can mm -hmm. set up a time to meet in the same room at the same time, which, I mean, you just saw it was rather difficult. Um, I've seen, we've seen that. Yes, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's when we can see it, and that's when we can ask the people to come in front of us. But the press doesn't have to do that. They just get to announce, yes, this happened. Not necessarily what happens afterwards, or during it, or any of the communication in between, or any of that. So I got one of my questions is, since I'm resubmitting my uh, an amendment to my original one, does do I wait to see if there's another complaint filed? Uh, you know, it's. That's, my, I guess that's my question, or do I wait for you guys to approve it? I mean, you're going to stamp it today, I, I hope. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it back in. Because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's changed quite a bit compared, oh, yeah, to the original, mm -hmm. compared to the original filing. It's very in-depth. Because the dollar amounts have all changed. And they had to because of the different places where the checks were accounted for in the, fir the first uh, Report. report. And I agree right. with you. Filling out a campaign finance report is very difficult. The state forms don't always allocate for. They're not very. They don't give good explanation. And it's difficult. And again, the new elections office that will be part of their training. We can't mandate it. We're not paying you to come. But if you want help, that would be that would be very helpful. There's a lot of new candidates in the city of Portage mm -hmm. now. So. Okay. Well, even the old candidates, okay. like like I said, if I had a question. Um, and, and you say, where can I get the correct answer? Where do I go? You know what? Even when I email down to the state election board with my questions, they tell me they can't give me legal advice. They just give me, so maybe an attorney. I, I, I took it as legal representation. I'm not looking at legal advice. I'm just looking at... Uh, what forms you're supposed to right. use uh, if you're supposed to file if you have a $100 check. Right. You just answered our question here. Yes, any time you get over a hundred dollars or more, you have to. You have to declare it. Right. Because I, I looked at more. I did on this report. So if somebody buys a fifty dollars ticket for your first fundraiser and then a fifty dollars ticket for your second one, now they have to be at it. Right. Right. But I, I also look at I looked at four different candidates' reports, and I said I I could pull each one of these things apart. Mm -hmm. And I but, I guarantee I think at least ninety nine percent of them there's something somewhere incorrect. Right. But the election board, the clerk's office, voter registration, whoever was handling the um, the election at the time, that's not something that they had. They didn't check it. I don't know if it's because they didn't have the manpower. I don't know if it's because they well, didn't. Very, it would be very time-consuming to go over each and every candidate's campaign finance report. Very mm -hmm. time-consuming. It would take an extra employee. Absolutely. And the last thing I had a question. If I wanted to file a complaint on someone not picking up their signs, you Would can. I do it with you? You can send an email. Or the code enforcer of Portage. Mm -hmm. 
you can probably do it with both. Because it, it has to do with elections, so you can file with elections, but the code enforcer in Portage might be a little quicker. Okay. Now I'm ready for questions for us. I, I think you guys can receive this report and determine whether or not that, that it has corrected the de any de deficiencies. And if it has complaint. And if yeah. it has corrected the deficiencies, then this matter is resolved. Um, and, and, you know, in addition to that, you don't have the complaint with here either. Right. I think it, it, it would be... Look yeah, I look at it. Yeah, it's, I think more detailed have, than oh, yeah. compared to the previous report. Yes. I mean, it would be more concerning if there was no attempt to correct the deficiencies. Right. right. I think since the she's responded to the complaint and I mean it's a much more detailed report. Oh, yeah. I've had a chance to go over, um, but it's much thicker. Yeah. <laughs> well, my wife took it out of my hands and she said, "Boy, oh boy, yeah, I have to do the report over." I said, "Well, I apologize. I've been doing it for this many years. I've never had a problem." All of a sudden, I got a candidate that's the nastiest campaign we've ever ran. Okay, they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> the election's I mean, over. When you get your house littered and it's trashed. Okay. Husband, please. They're <laughs> not here for that. Well, they're not here to listen to our. My, my, my suggestion would be since she has submitted a, a revised um, report, um, the complainant is not here. Uh, for she, is. It. she is here now. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was a copy. Did you not get a copy of that? Okay. Well, please come forward. We're here and we're doing the hearing now. Are you planning on testifying? Sure. Or speaking? Then I'll need to swear you. Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Just to bring you up to speed is uh, Ms. Modesto has filed a new uh, finance report that uh, carries a lot more detail than the previous one. And that's kind of where we're at at this point. And I, were you finished, sir? I'm sorry? Were you finished yeah. with your statement? Thank you. Did you have anything to add? No. Just I appreciate it. as soon as possible. Let me know if it's... um. Like I said, I don't want another have to answer another complaint, so I'd like to get it stamped and um somebody stamped it now. Run it back and see what Someone was building outside the time camp. Thank you. Do you want to stamp it now and then give it yeah, back? Well Becky. Becky, make a copy as well. Make a you, copy you so can we can just stamp see. it so we can give them a copy back. That way, if not, it'll take a couple more hours. We already turned it in Thanks. half an hour ago. And Ms. Rebus, did you want to address the board today? I mean, I, I sure I can. Um, I think I have a piece I tried to get detailed, but I think it's probably the board And they did. She provided a. It's much more detailed um, compared to the original, you know, statement that was filed. Um, I'm not going to speak to the board president. You can tell what we suggest to do at this time. Well, um, I guess at, at this time, are you looking for any other relief from your complaint other than the report be corrected? Okay. So we'll accept and we're getting it stamped the corrected report and assume that the matter is now resolved mm -hmm. okay. to everyone's satisfaction. And she'll have copies. Um, Becky will bring back copies as well. So, so everybody will get those. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else to add? Or? No. Okay. Thank you for appearing. The matter is concluded. Okay, next one. How will I get notification that it's been concluded? Is something in the mail or? Send out send out. Send the yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. hearing everyone. Appreciate it. Next we have 
I don't know, I'll try for the Kuziella versus Allison. Okay, would you step forward, please? Is it Kuziella? Yes. If you're both uh, planning on addressing the board, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And who goes first, the complainant? The complainant. Okay. You can address us first. Um, He'd like to step out the table into the microphone. That's great. Right. Thanks. On uh, Tuesday, uh, April 30th, I noticed the sign of uh, the candidate at uh, 23rd in Marquette, um, actually in the town of Porter in their right of way. And uh, so I double checked with my county chair to verify that you know the sign was missing the necessary uh, um, disclaimer line. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why I sent my letter to the um, election board, uh, just you know, complaining and would like it to be remedied. Okay. Okay. And what relief would you like to see? Mm -hmm. um, considering it's after the election, I mean, I, I know he did up it. From what I understand, he did put the little label on the sign. So, you know, at this point, I don't think there's really anything additional from my side. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Allison. Mr. Allison. Good afternoon. My name is Bob Allison. I ran the primary election May, May 7th. I ran for the Democratic seat in the third ward in the town of Chesterton. From the moment I was asked to run, I was con uh, filled with excitement and a little bit of concern all at once. After putting together a design for a sign, we submitted it to a sign company. Once receiving the signs, I was excited to get started and put them out and announce that I was running. I received two phone calls from friends. One was a friend that is a Portage firefighter, a good friend of mine ran for the uh, school board, I believe. He said, hey, Bob, you need to put this sign on your, this disclaimer on your signs. He said, funny story, he said, my opponent called me and told me, hey, man, I don't want you to get in trouble with the election board. You've got to put this disclaimer on your sign. I was like, okay. He received another phone call from a friend who works for the town and said, hey, someone's filing this complaint against you. I said, okay, I've already received one phone call. I said, I'm, I'm taking care of it. So my wife and I went to a local office supply story, store and bought address labels, which was recommended to us from that same friend. Got address labels, put a 12 font, paid for by the committee to elect Robert Allison. Most of the signs were taken care of within 12 hours. Some were up to 36 hours, but they were all taken care of. I can honestly stand and swear before you today that there was no intent on my part. I'm new to this. This is the first time I've ever run for anything. Um, I'm truly sorry for the need to appear before you and waste your time with this. I received calls from the media. <laughs> I received calls from town employees. And believe it or not, this really boosted my campaign. There are people that are very angry about this. A simple phone call would have done. I got two phone calls, one from the building commissioner and one from the street commissioner saying, hey, Bob, your signs are in the wrong place. Do me a favor, move them, or come pick them up at the 15th and Broadway. And almost everybody that called me, even friends that work for the town, I've, worked, I've been a firefighter in town for 25 years. Everybody knows me. Almost everybody asked me, why didn't you get a phone call? Why didn't you just say, hey, you need to put this disclaimer on your sign. Why didn't you file a complaint? As with Mr. Modesto, or Liz, I'm sorry, Miss Modesto, I was called by media outlets. You know, why didn't you do this? You know, you know, you see, you could get fined up to $5,000 server year. I have people at work asking me about this. And I said, so what's it for? And I said, and I showed them because we had postcards made up as well to hand out and data graphics put the disclaimer on without me even telling about it. So I've heard from a congressman who's pretty much said the same thing, homeowners association, police officers, firefighters from town, all saying, you know, don't worry about it. I called the election board. I don't know who I spoke to. I've called a couple times because I was asking them about it as well. I'm truly sorry for my mistake. It's a learning experience for me. I've corrected the mistake. I've run a positive campaign. I haven't swung any mud. I'm not going to bow down to any negativity. Um, regardless of the people that don't want me in office, 
I've got the Democratic nomination. I'm not going to be deterred by any bullying acts um, or any negativity. I'm going to continue to run a positive campaign. Uh, I want to thank you all for your time today. And thank you for all, all for what you do. And I think your idea of educating us on the finance report would be a great idea. <laughs> well, not only that, um, and again, I just want to make sure for the record, for everybody who's watching on TV or YouTube, because it is streamed. Um, I, have a, I, have a, I have a picture so, from my opponent's yeah, so, as well. Um, again, not everybody follows the rules. Right. But I, because they're not following the rules doesn't necessarily mean that they're mudslinging. Everyone is given the same information. Sign disclaimers information was put on here. Absolutely. But as a new candidate, you know, everyone has a lot to learn with everything that they do. Right. So I do think that education um, is important and um, it will be coming. It, again, it's a little late for your case. Yeah. But um, we try to provide the information. And if you know anybody else who's looking to be a new candidate, I would thoroughly encourage them to read all the information that's you know, at their fingertips or search for it, talk to other people. Um, Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I, I have no yeah. arguments whatsoever. Signs, signs are very picky. Certain people right. have to have four. Certain people have to have just a lot. So certain people, everybody has to have the disclaimer. So there's a lot of interesting But do you agree a simple phone call? No. No. Yeah. no. no. I, Some I, people I, like to use proper channels that are this um, in this day and age that you know, well, our paper trails and things like that. I mean, this is a legal, running for office is a legal thing. So. Email's a proper paper trace as well. I agree. But. I was contacted, contacted by but an attorney by email. No, we, we can't expect you to take a yeah. phone call from someone of, you know, of the opposite, opposite party right. and, and for you True. to act on True. that. Right. Right. So right. I think that Ms. Kujawa actually did the proper procedure. She probably, did, she probably did you a favor because this is different than having a campaign finance report that's not completed accurately. True. This is actually a, mis a class A misdemeanor. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I think Just that that little line. Right. So I think the and like the, I said, one of my it, my it's opponent, it's opponent it's it was covered up all day right in front of the polling place. It was covered up all day. Right. Yeah, so I, and I didn't file a complaint. Yeah, I, think I said something to him, but know the rules. Yeah. Right, you've got to know the rules. And he said, fine. I mean, this is my opponent. I said something to him. He said, okay, I'll take care of it. Well, and again, we can, we can give information. Sure. We can't make people look at it, but um, it is but very... It was, it was corrected within... Right, you made an effort time. to correct it. You learned, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a small hand slap. It would be different if you hadn't tried to correct it. Okay. Anything further, sir? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll consider the matter resolved and closed. Mm -hmm. And we have update on House Bill 1217. So, um, it, House Bill. 1217 was signed into law on May 1st and will take effect July 1st. Um, with that being said, it will add an additional Democrat member of the board and an additional Republican member of the board. Um, do we reach out to the chairman? Like, Monica, do you reach out to the chairman to say? Well, I, um, I would. They're both aware. I would say I think that they're both aware. I don't know that there has to be. Um, I would imagine they're both aware. Um, I'm more looking at it from a logistics standpoint. Right. Do people need the election board materials. Do they already have them? Right. Um, are we having a meeting on July 1st to swear them in? Because that's also the same day that the director and assistant director should be um, voted on. And there's a lot that should happen on that day. Right. I don't know that you're going to have employees starting. July 1, you're going to have to have your election board formed first, okay? In order to have the election board formed, we're going to have to have those nominations from the um, each party chair. So I think, um, and, and this could be done very informally in terms of, you know, any member of the board can be contacting the election or the uh, um, county chairs and say, who's going to be your next uh, appointed member? Um, you know, then come 
after July 1st, we can go ahead and spur them in. You can have your official meeting, and after that meeting, because it's going to have the board is going to have to be composed, um, then you're going to have recommendations of employees that will all get taken care of in July. You're not going to have the employees until that board gets formed, they take office, and then those are brought to a board meeting for the board to, then to approve or not approve. Well, there's a lot of due dates that happen in July, mm -hmm. and um, the director and the assistant director are now in charge of the day to day. So if they're not in business on July 1st, this bill makes it so that I'm not doing the day-to-day. -day. So mm -hmm. I would like the board members to take office on July 1st and vote on July 1st. I've okay. made um, preparations already with the auditor's office. I'm in conversations with the commissioners and the council as far as budget. Everything is set to take effect July 1st. And our current board dissolves. Right. We dissolve on July 1st. As well. So it needs to happen on July 1st. So I don't know if we do it beforehand. You, you can't. Do, I, I would, if you want that to start. July 1st. That it would probably make more sense to, if you want to do it July 1st. That's a Monday. And just have a try to have a board meeting on that Monday. I mean, can they be sworn in the last week of June effective July 1? I don't know that they can take action as a board in terms of approving the employees until after July 1. Or unless, unless we're getting back into, Dave, if you want to have a proxy. Let's do a proxy and mm -hmm. we can do that. We should probably, I think we should have a meeting on July 1. Okay. I mean, can we do, can we put the board members in place the last week of June? And well, they can't, they that? can't go in effect until the 1st. Right. If we have the meeting on July 1st, they can just appear and, and then the done. new board will be composed at that point. Right. What time on the 1st? I'm available all day. Time too. Because I'll be out of town anyway, so. Okay. So I'll just get a proxy. Yeah. So Location. Um, do you want me to send an email or do you want to the chairman telling them that we will have a board meeting? Yeah, we, you can do that. Just okay. let both of them know. And that, um, you know, whatever, whomever there it is that they're looking to appoint, you know, that they should be advising them of that meeting as well. Um, it would be helpful if you had their contact information well in advance so that you can begin to communicate with them mm -hmm. so they can get the yeah, so agenda, get the, out, the notices. Mm -hmm. Get everything done. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll have to get all that to you so they can get the proper notice that, hey, you're going to be starting. Right. <laughs> so I first. understand what's going on. A little as much as can be. Okay. Because then you have to do, you have to do the approval of your directors on that July 1st meeting as well. Right. So that the directors then can begin to hire their own staff. Mm -hmm. And then that has to come back before the board. To Correct, to be them, approved. But that gives them a couple but weeks before the standing board meeting. So exactly, because they're going to need time in July to get that list together so that the next meeting, not the July 1st meeting, the next meeting then mm -hmm. to approve all those employees mm -hmm. would be mm -hmm. my understanding of how this should probably That's be. how I read it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our, what, when, what date is our July meeting? Let's see, the standard will be? The 18th. Three. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I would I would assume that'll be the process then July eighteenth will be when we approve the director's yeah. employee staff mm -hmm. to get those approved. The director should get approved on the first mm -hmm. and as well as adding in the other board members, but then yeah. we should have enough to, to get us that far. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
I, I do have a conflict on the 18th, but, okay. but that should be okay. That should be okay without me. First, you'll be here, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. The first is the right? Yep. So, okay. So, the train. So the next meeting we have, though, will be June 14th, June 14th at 1 p.m. Right. And that will be on the campaign finance report information, the updates. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next meeting after that will be July 1st for the formation of our new board. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're looking at August the 15th? After and then, that? Well, and then July 18th as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, July 18th, and then we can soon just continue on third Thursday. Right. Hopefully. Yeah. The new board. Yeah, as long as there's no more people, we got to accommodate. So, so yes, that would be the hope that we continue on. At three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. So I will look into rooms for the June 14th and July 1st meeting. Okay. See what's available, and I'll let everybody know. All right. Perfect. Okay. We're good. And this says updated deadlines, and that's that's it. We're done. Those are it. Okay. <coughs> um, we did omit public comment. Pardon me. So we did omit public comment on the agenda. Oh, if there's it any other public ad. Yeah. Uh, at this time, uh, we would accept any public comments anyone would like to make. Or any questions? Or questions? Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, June 14th.